it's Kai and welcome to Hardware Heaven. Today we are going to be taking a look at the new Gigabyte Sniper 5 motherboard. We're going to go into all of the features and we've also done some testing so we're going to show you the results so you can really know how well this motherboard performs. Let's get right into it. So let's see what we get inside the box. We've obviously got the motherboard itself, the G1 Sniper 5. So let's just take this out of the box and let you guys have a quick look at it before we go into everything in a lot more detail as you can see from the outset they've gone with the green and black finish there which i think is very gamery we've got a lot of brands that use the green and black color scheme so let's put that to one side and see what else we get in the box we've got three sata cables we've got an sli connector and a crossfire connector as well as a three-way sli connector a four-way sli connector the wireless card and aerial two extra USB 3.0 ports and the plate that you put on the back of the motherboard once it's in the PC which labels all of the ports and then we've got our op amp upgrades kit now you may not know what this is but do not fear I'm going to go into everything that you need to know about the op amps a little bit more detail than I did on the article if you would like to look at the article then I'll put a link in the description below so you can also read that and look at some additional photos then as always you're going to have your manual installation driver CDs, various setups and guidebooks, and the most important part, the Gigabyte sticker. So looking at the motherboard itself, I'm going to point out some key features that we actually have on the board. We've got a gold-plated CPU socket, Intel LAN with high ESO protection, audio noise guard with path lighting, gaming headphone amplifier, which is the op amp, which I'll go into a lot more detail in a few moments, creative sound core 3D with custom gold-plated shielding, Nichigon high-end audio capacitors, four way graphic support, durable a black solid cap, 10 USB 3.0 ports including the extra ones that I showed in the box. We've got 10 SATA ports along the right hand side, OC, PG, PCIe SATA power connectors, on off charge USB port, debug display and an onboard power reset clear CMOS button and dual BIOS dip switch with voltage read points. We've also got the dual silent fan water thermal design and it's all on a two times copper PCB. Now the four feature highlights that are outlined is the Creative Sound Core 3D gold plated shielding, audio noise guard with path lighting around the board, op amp upgrade kit which is provided here and the 15 gold plated audio ports. So let's talk about the upgradable op amps. Basically what this does means users can choose audio quality based on individual listening preferences. There's a wide availability of additional op amps. It's a low cost way to dramatically improve audio quality. It improves audio dynamics and overall sound quality with little cost and there's no need for expensive speakers or high-end audio equipment. What you can use is this op amp removal tool and actually replace the op amp which is located here and you simply pull out the op amp and place the other one in and each different op amp provides a different sound. I was actually in Taiwan with Gigabyte and went to a day where we tested different op amps with different sounds. Now some are more designed for pop music, some are designed for listening to film, some are designed for listening to live music and depending on how you want to use the sound and how you'll use your motherboard you can get different op amps and customize that to however you want. So what is an audio amp? An audio amplifier increases the amplitude of the audio input. Increasing the sound amplitude increases sound volume. There's an improvement in sound quality, ability to hear more rich and vibrant sound details and it helps drive high-end headphones, much like you would get from a sound card, except this is built into the board. So what op amps do you get with a motherboard? Well, you actually get the BB OPA2134, which is a neutral sound with clean, sharp outlooking of full frequency range, very high cost performance, suitable for all music types. And then you get the additional one, which is the LM4562NA, which is clear and bright with softness of touching, suitable for pop music and small orchestras. You can purchase additional op amps 
on the Gigabyte website and as I said these will range depending on what kind of sound you like and this could be anything from $1 to $20 so they really are inexpensive. So the play that we can see here as the Soundcore 3D is actually an onboard creative Soundcore 3D quad core audio processor and it allows you to use programs such as Crystal Voice, Soundcore 3D and SBX Pro Studio with all of the sound and voice features which really do improve the quality and creative and Gigabyte have worked well together to bring the best from sound quality that they can do built into the motherboard. Not only will it improve all quality but they have specifically built in gaming headphone amplifiers these are specially designed for gamers they have a high capacity amplifier able to drive 150 loads fuller range of dynamic sound with crisper details and less distortion wide bandwidth low noise high slew rate and low distortion making it ideal for professional audio usage so as well as the great sound quality that they've really tried to improve on this motherboard as I said, you can have four graphics cards. They've got locked and loaded extreme heatsink design, which for the PWM area that allows users to employ both passive, active and water cooling setups. There are nine fan connectors on the board. We've got the OPT fan, which is the additional CPU fan pin header useful for high performance coolers employing two fans. Then have got the CPU fan, seven system fans and then nine strategically placed smart fan pin headers allow for more precise control of the system and cpu fans so you can really place them depending on where you want them and you'll see the pins located all around the board you can really control the fans how you want with the easy tune app there's comprehensive cpu and system fan controls individual airflow and speed settings via a dedicated digital controller and new and improved interface they have also built in some great overclock features there's an onboard restart button which assists users in getting the absolute maximum control there is also the onboard clear cmos button makes it easier than ever to reset your bias to its factory defaults there's the onboard power and led debug display puts users in the driving seat when experimented with different hardware configurations there is also the OCPG, which provides onboard SATA power connectors, providing more stable PCIe power when using multiple graphics configurations. Gigabyte Ultra Durable Plus technology brings motherboards with a range of high current capable components that provide the highest quality of power delivery to the CPU for record breaking performance, cool and efficient operation and extended motherboard lifespan. There is also a new Gigabyte BIOS that you will see on this motherboard. You can take control of how your BIOS looks and feels with a fully customizable UI, adjust overclocking and performance settings in real time, smooth mouse control and shortcuts for fast navigation. Gigabyte's new dashboard mode allows users to have a complete access to all data related to your motherboard's key components, including CPU, graphics and memory clocks, temperatures and voltages. The first time ever, overclockers can adjust CPU clock, frequency and voltage settings in real time with BIOS. This massively saves time, allowing users to find optimal settings without having to reboot. Gigabyte App Center gives you easy access to a wealth of Gigabyte apps that help you get the most from your Gigabyte motherboard. Using a simple user unified user interface Gigabyte App Center allows you to launch all Gigabyte apps installed on your system. There is the EasyTune app which allows users to fine tune their system settings. There is the BIOS app which allows you to update your system's BIOS from within Windows using a simple and slick graphical user interface. Then there's Gigabyte Easy Setup which combines several key utilities designed to simplify, install and configure procedures for several exclusive Gigabyte apps. Gigabyte USB Blocker provides you with an easy to use interface that allows you to block certain USB device types. There is Gigabyte On-Off Charge 2, which automatically detects your mobile device and displays it on the screen. There is also exclusive Bluetooth 4.0 capability. Gigabyte is the only motherboard vendor to bundle Bluetooth 4.0 compatible PCIe card. Bluetooth 4.0 includes Bluetooth Smart, a new class of Bluetooth technology that offers a revolutionary low power. Let's talk a little bit about the Intel Core HD graphics. There is premium gaming experience with 26 times graphics improvement, frame rate conversion for smoother video playback on screen, and cutting edge display options made for 4K Ultra HD collage display. 
4K resolution displays support utilizing approximately 4,000 pixels on the vertical axis, more than four times today's standard HD pixel density, for unrivaled visual clarity and stunning realism. And here on screen, we have a full list of the motherboard specifications. Here would be a good time to pause if you're wanting to read through them all. So that's all the main features of the motherboard covered. Now I'm going on holiday for two weeks, I'm going to pass the rest of the video on to my colleague Stu, who is going to show all of you the results of the testing that we've done on the motherboard. See you in two weeks and enjoy the rest of the video. So thanks to Kaye for taking us through the features of the Gigabyte board there. While she's been away on holiday, we've been busy testing the board with a new Haswell CPU. So that's the i7-4770K processor. It scores pretty much where we would expect in something like size of Sandra, so it's a little bit faster than the 3770K. Falls behind the i7-3960X, which is the X79 based system, and when we compare to AMD, we can see that that is quite a chunk slower than the new 4770K. So this is AMD's fastest 8350 processor, and when we're looking at Cinebench, you can see it finishes on 6.88 points, whereas the new i7-4770K hits up to 8.52 with the X79 based system, that little bit ahead because it has more cores and more threads so it is a more powerful processor for things like Cinebench. Real world use, so this is a music conversion using DB Power Amp to take a 2 CD lossless album and convert it to MP3. We can see that again the X79 based system with 3960X is the fastest processor but the 4770K is scoring really well and finishes about 7 seconds ahead of the AMD chip. The next test up we're looking more at the motherboard performance here so we have the PCIe slots, we're using a PCIe SSD, it's an OCZ PCIe SSD and what we can see is that the Gigabyte board is managing to draw just that little bit extra performance out of the architecture. It's finishing ahead of the high end X79 board, a decent chunk ahead of one of our Z77 boards and again the, the AMD system is that little bit further behind. USB 3 performance which is heavily impacted by the type of controller that the motherboard manufacturers put on their board, how they connect that controller across the various different buses in the system. The Gigabyte board has no issues with anything like that. They have a really strong controller here and what it's doing is it's drawing out all the performance possible from our USB dock with a Vertex 450 SSD in. That is one of the newest SSDs around. It was released just last week and so it's great to see that Gigabyte are allowing us to get all the performance we can from that. So moving on to integrated GPU performance, we have two tests from the latest 3D mark here, that's Firestrike in green and Cloudgate in blue, and in both cases the 4770K's integrated GPU is performing higher than the 3770K, so around about 2000 points in Cloudgate. And what that means when we move to real world performance is that there are around about 10 frames per second extra at um, a resolution of around 1280 by 720 so this is us using grid 2 for this test and on high settings so average of 43 on the new Intel CPU average of 33 on the older generation and one of the things worth noting for this actual result is that with games like grid 2 the new Intel CPU has enhanced graphic settings so we get better smoke and things like that and so despite the fact that we've got this extra workload on the integrated GPU the and extra image quality because of that, the newer GPU is actually still 10 frames per second faster. So that brings us to some 3D Mark performance for Firestrike Extreme and in this test we've got a couple of GTX 770s running on each of the boards and this gives us a SLI score of just over 6300 as a kind of base score and the fastest board is actually the G1 Sniper 5 on 6580. That is partially down to the fact that it runs two 16 time slots and is allowed then to compete really well with the X79 based board which most of them use the, the two 16 slots. And in real world performance we can see that the X79 based system does just edge a little bit ahead of the 4770K and Sniper 5 but 
really not to a level that we would see any noticeable kind of real world if you had them sat beside each other they would look essentially identical. What is noticeable though is that the FX8350 AMD system drops around 7 frames per second on average behind and the lowest frames per second is actually significantly lower. So on to power usage we know that 4770K uses more than 3770K just from the Intel specs and that tends to show on the, um, the actual load and idle test there's a little difference there still a lot less power on 4770k or power draw anyway than the AMD and x79 systems and a really low power draw of 5 watts when we're on standby on the new CPU Hi, so that was our review of the new Haswell based i7 4770k processor from Intel as well as the G1 Sniper 5 motherboard from Gigabyte Processor firstly, it's uh, more of the same from Intel but faster and that's no bad thing because um, one of the things which is significantly improved about it is the integrated GPU so from 3770K up to 4770K we have quite a difference in frame rates around about 10 frames per second in grid 2 for example and that is especially good considering that we have those extra say smoke effects and things like that in grid 2 uh, which are providing better image quality on the new generation of Intel processor compared to the old one. So better IQ, faster frame rates, can't really complain there. There's also a few other changes um, to the power states, things like that. But also um, a little bit of a tweak to how easy it is to overclock. So things are, um, it's, we're now able to overclock in a way that won't affect other elements of the system. So it makes it a little bit more flexible and less likely that you're going to run into overclocking bottlenecks of your other components than the processor. So we got to about 5.4 gigahertz on our first few attempts at overclocking with the 4770K, so that's all looking quite good. Um, partially related to the motherboard, the memory support is really good as well, so we were running up at 2933 megahertz um, without any issue, it was just a case of go in, select the X XMP profile, and then off it went, no problems at all with the, the high-end memory support. So, in comparison to an AMD CPU, the 4770K was faster than the FX8350 throughout our testing. Um, it's quite a gap now between what Intel are doing and what AMD are doing. The AMD part didn't matter whether it was converting music, converting video, gaming, whatever you wanted to do, the Intel was faster and um, not a huge surprise because they were already really um, a little bit faster with the 3770K but the 4770K just takes it that little bit further um, and that looks like it's continuing to be the case as well in tests like um, PC Mark 8 which we've got running in the background here uh, just doing a few tests at the last minute to make sure that our results are right and um, yeah and 4770K running really well on that and finishing faster than AMD and yet another benchmark Looking at the motherboard itself, the Sniper 5 is basically a really great board. Um, hugely impressed by it throughout. It's been stable, it's been fast, um, build quality is really good on it. So we have this black PCB which always looks nice, but it, the fact that it's a glass fabric PCB, you've got the copper layers in there, um, electromagnetic shielding, and solid capacitors, all those sorts of things are all in here. Good power phase system with all the components around there, all high quality, good manufacturer makes them, so that's all good. Um, there's loads of flexibility as well, it doesn't really matter what you want to do. If you want to install nine fans, you've got all the fan controllers on there. Four GPUs, not a problem. As we've said, the high-end memory, that's fine. Loads of USB ports. Um, nice to see some gold connectors, but it's not essential. And it's just a, a nice look to this board, it matches up with all the audio components there. So you've got the EMI shielding on there and on the audio component, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, there's a few things that we might change, or one key thing we'd probably change about the board, and that's the location of the front panel USB 3 ports. It's often the case that they're around about here on the motherboard, but it would be just nice if Gigabyte had placed it right over on the edge and flipped it around so it's pointing out this way. Same as they've done with the PCIe power, it's pointing out the way. It makes cable wiring a little bit easier and just bringing that over would be fine. There is a second one down here for USB 3 and that makes wiring a little bit easier as well because you can loop it right around the back of the board in your case. But um, this one here just 
putting it over there would be fine. We've got some nice features like the bow retrieve points, which we see quite often on board buttons, all sorts of things like that. Dual BIOS as well, there's switches here to control that. So performance was great throughout. We had um, great SLI scaling, we had good memory support again as we said. Um, really good speed from the SATA ports as well, so we had our SSD running um, pretty much as fast as we've ever seen it. Same went for the PCIe SSD and also USB 3, where just the Gigabyte board continually got us extra performance that we wouldn't necessarily have seen from other motherboard manufacturers who use lower quality USB controllers and things like that. So, audio-wise, um, great to see about just trying to push the boundaries a little bit. We've seen Sound Blaster Audio on motherboards before and we've seen them separated by LEDs and all that sort of stuff. But adding the op amp in just gives us that little bit extra push into finding out what higher quality sound is like in the headphone amp and obviously helps with that as well. But this little swappable op amp which you get the kit for here with the replacement one just gives that, that little extra push for people as I say to try higher quality audio it's not going to compete with the highest end sound cards that you've got around but it's not meant to it's meant to just improve the quality of onboard audio which it does and give people that little bit extra compared to some other manufacturers so the other thing that we would um, probably say about the Sniper 5 is that the BIOS is hugely overwhelming when you go into it for the first time. Not that it's um, it's a bad BIOS, it's not, um, and there are loads of features in there and that's kind of the problem because the new layout that they've got just throws information at you, loads of information which is great when you get to know it, but that first few times that you're in the BIOS you kind of get a little bit lost trying to find things, um, wondering what settings are where and all that sort of stuff. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, after that initial period, it's, a, it's a, a high quality BIOS. We also like the little extra card that you get, so that's a dual band Wi-Fi in with Bluetooth 4. And it just sits in there, does its thing, streams HD fine, streams 3D fine, um, max out your home internet connection probably without any problem. Ours is um, over 100 meg internet and no problem at all with getting the full speed over that and just overall a, a really high quality board for a board that is a launch product with a new CPU Gigabyte have done really well at getting a solid high performing board on market on day one and uh, we've been playing with this for a month now and no stability issues really fast um, feature packed really all you could want from a Z87 board so um, couldn't recommend it higher if you want more benchmarks, you should head over to our website, the link is down below. We've got full PC Mark 8 results, things like that, um, some extra system tests, all that sort of thing. If you want a Titan to go in this, because buying a new system, you want maybe the best GPU, we've also got a competition running to win a GTX Titan, so check that out. Again, the link is below. And thanks for watching our review, and we'll see you soon.